Oklahoma's new abortion law will prevent most Texas women from crossing the state line who are trying to get an abortion. And the Texas military department is now providing soldiers with equipment to save drowning migrants. This is the Politics of Texas. I'm Stephen Dial. Here's your Fast Four. This week, Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt signed a six-week abortion ban modeled after the abortion law that we have here in Texas. It took effect immediately. Like Texas's law, it allows private citizens to sue abortion providers who they suspect are breaking the law. The Dallas Morning News reported this week Oklahoma abortion providers estimated that nearly 2,000 women from Texas travel to Oklahoma for an abortion each month. Following the death of Arlington native Sergeant Bishop Evans, Texas National Guard members told reporters they were discouraged from trying to save migrants drowning in the Rio Grande River. Several migrants have drowned in recent days. This week, the head of the Texas Military Department told lawmakers that soldiers will now have buoy throw bags. The flotation device will be thrown from land into the river when a soldier sees a migrant struggling in the water. Soldiers will not go into the waters for rescue. Training on the new equipment will end next week. Texas native and WNBA star Brittany Griner remains in a Russian jail held now for more than two months. This week, the U.S. State Department is now classifying her as being wrongfully detained. The change in classification means the State Department will work more aggressively to negotiate her release. Russian officials detain Griner at an airport for an alleged drug charge. The latest poll from the University of Texas shows Governor Greg Abbott has a 11-point lead over former Congressman Beto O'Rourke. O'Rourke is back on the campaign trail after testing positive for COVID. He's been talking a lot about the hot-button issue of abortion and the possibility of Roe v. Wade being struck down. Governor Abbott has kept his focus on border security with his plan, Operation Lone Star, and continuing to bus migrants to D.C. The most talked about thing this week was the leaked opinion from the U.S. Supreme Court in reference to the court's landmark decision on Roe v. Wade back in 1973. Roe v. Wade's origin is here in Dallas County. Jane Roe was an alias name for the woman in Dallas County who brought the case. Henry Wade was the district attorney at the time. Joining us for our Sunday conversation to discuss is women's health and politics reporter for the Dallas Morning News, Belen Hollers, and WBAP radio anchor, Nicole Osei. Belen, kind of talk about first the impact here in Texas. What would happen if this opinion is actually the law of the land? Uh, Texas passed a trigger law, which would go into effect 30 days after Roe versus Wade is overturned. Um, but there's also abortion laws still on the book here in Texas that these pre-row statutes, the criminal penalties, there are people going around in the state saying we could enforce them. And it's really up to the district attorneys in the area whether or not they're going to enforce them. And so it's anyone's guess if they're actually enforceable. So I would say day one, Roe versus Wade is overturned. Abortion in Texas becomes illegal. Nicole, there was a poll that said that about 70% of Texans are for some type of abortion. What are you hearing here in North Texas from people and through you guys' reporting about the reaction to this huge news? From pro-life people, they're saying, you know, they're hoping this <laughs> decision is final, but they're saying, you know what, we're also thinking about what happens after that's enacted, i.e., in wanting to talk to lawmakers about, okay, well, now you've got to get women access to health care. You've got to do job training for women who may be needing more gainful employment to take care of these children and then also access to child care. And then you've got people who are pro-choice saying, you know what, we're planning on also contacting state lawmakers and asking them to maybe introduce bills to maybe counteract that decision. They're wanting people to speak out and get involved in this debate because whether or not the decision is finalized, we're still going to be battling about this for decades to come. A lot of people don't know. I know I didn't know. I've only been here two and a half years, but I did not know the origin of Roe v. Wade was here in Dallas County. Belen, I know you recently uh, talked to someone associated with the case. Kind of tell us a little about that. There were uh, two lawyers associated with the case. One that's name is probably more well known, which is Sarah Weddington. But the original lawyer on the case was actually Linda Coffey. And I met with Linda Coffey um, the morning after this leaked decision, and I spoke with her, um, you know, about what this meant, obviously what it meant for her legacy, 
and she was actually the one who filed the case. I've gone out to her home and seen the original filing receipts. And so for her, she says, obviously, this isn't going anywhere. There's still going to be litigation. And she told me she was just surprised that we're still having this conversation. But at the same time, there was, um, you know, those around her, local feminists in the area. Um, There's a lot of commiseration um, and the conversation of it lasting 49 years, um, being right short of 50 years. And so, um, but I think the, I mean, I didn't, honestly, when I started doing abortion politics coverage, I had no idea um, the relationship that Dallas County had with the Roe versus Wade case. So I think it's really interesting Texas's place in this debate, especially since we were the first to have this incredibly restrictive abortion law go into place before, you know, Roe is even ter- overturned. Texas already has what has been, uh, you know, known as the heartbeat bill, which is now law. Oklahoma just passed a similar law. So does it really matter if Roe v. Wade is overturned since Texas already has a, a really restrictive abortion law? You know, I think one of the things that I'm hearing from people is that they're nervous about, okay, they're, as you said, they're neighboring states that are now acting tougher laws. So you may have some people that may have access to the funding to go somewhere else to get one, to get an abortion, but there's going to be a lot of women that may not have access to that. So, you know, what are they going to do if they're in a desperate situation? They may still try to seek an abortion, but not through a safe means. So there's that conversation that's happening because the abortions are still going to be happening. Could this open the door for some other things that people may see as landmark decisions? Could that open the door for those being challenged as well? Those on the anti-abortion side will say, well, this has to do with life. That has to do with privacy. Um, when it comes to these other cases and other landmark decisions. I think also to recognize how unprecedented it is to overturn um, a decision by the court. Um, It's only happened a few times, which is, you know, why there's a lot of questioning about what's going to happen next. I think an important aspect to highlight is that this doesn't make abortion illegal in the states, but it gives the states the agency to decide what type of restrictions they want in their state. And I think that's what you're going to see, you know, here in the South, you know, Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, these states are going to have restrictions, but that doesn't mean that, you know, California, New York, these East Coast states are also going to have restrictions. So I think that's, you know, some of the confusion I've seen, you know, in the media, on Twitter and things like that. Nicole Boleyn, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. For the latest political news, head over to our website, fox4news.com. We will see you next time for another edition of the politics of Texas.